Well, Nathaniel, we got your truck in here, and uh, after studying the way your frame is done and the frame on the truck is done, I've decided to cut your frame up under the cab past the uh, last cross member. This frame is completely boxed in all the way to that point, and uh, and the I beams that go back, they're locked in at that point, so I'll go right behind there. Your frame's wide open, be easy to splice right there. So what we're gonna do today is we're fixing to pull your cab off of here, we're gonna pull your motor off there. Well, Nathaniel, I bought a bunch more parts sitting back here for your uh, 5.9 engine. I bought you uh, a rocker cover gaskets, uh, push rod gaskets, a rear main seal with a new sleeve, a front seal with a new sleeve to go over the uh, crankshaft, oil filter and all that, and I've got all that behind me. Now, uh, as far as converting the uh, four-wheel drive system underneath this Bronco, which is two-wheel drive, I've decided to change a little bit, and I'm actually going to cut the front of the frame of this one off and cut the front of the frame off on the F-150 and uh, just put it right up in underneath here and then that's going to give uh, give me everything I need, my springs, my steering, my I-beams, everything will be exactly the way it was on the F-150 just right up under here. Now Diesel Specialty Conversions has uh, sent me a kit to install the 5.9 into the F-150 frame so that's going to help a lot. Now here's your uh, engine uh, setting in the uh, F-150 frame. Now being this frame is, is almost identical, it changes just a little bit on that unit, it's a little bit taller further on back, but it's identical in the front, so I'll be able to locate this in and, and scab it onto your frame in a real good location, and I can install this in a way that's extremely strong. I've sectioned frames for years for UPS, especially on them pups where you see the tandems and you see the front trailer in front of the back trailer. I've done a lot of frame on that front trailer and uh, with that front trailer pulling that back one with all the abuse it gets, uh, they showed me a real nice technique on uh, putting those frames together where you won't ever have any trouble with it. And then the kit that I got from Diesel Conversion Specialist uh, is made to go into this unit so it helps me a lot by locating the engine. They're, they already know where the engine needs to go in this unit to fit in that truck so uh, I can do all this mock-up and building uh, right here like it is and make all this cross member and everything fit real nice then I'll cut it off then I'll put it in there but uh, I will test fit the motor in there one more time before I detail and, uh, and uh, clean all this up but let me give you a little closer look at how this is fitting now before I show you how this is fitting I've got to give a big uh, shout out to diesel convergence specialist uh, Doug out there and Sean have been helping me along uh, with the advice and tech support with their install kit and I can't stress enough of how valuable that is. A lot of these companies sell you parts and you can never get a hold to nobody and can't get any help. Well, I made one call and got with Doug and he uh, put uh, Sean on the phone and these are people that put these in all the time and uh, extremely helpful to make a phone call and say, hey, where's this mount going to whatever hole or what'd you do for this or what'd you do for that? And uh, they're open for me to call them back at any time. So thank you very much, Doug. And thank you, Sean, very, very much for uh, for giving me that tech support. Now, let me give you a little closer look at this. In this frame on these wheels and stuff, being able to roll it in and out and move it around and uh, use it as a jig is outstanding. Now up front, uh, me and Sean were talking about, uh, he told me that some people cut this and drop and lower it and uh, to make it fit. Well, I want a more of a factory look, so I'm gonna leave that in there, then I'm gonna rebuild that gusset and make that a lot stronger inside there, but make it mold around the engine. It's, it's uh, not that hard to do, and it'll look better than sectioning that and dropping that down. But either way, it'll work just fine. But doing this way, it still lets me locate both sides of my frame rail so none of that moves. I can get in there and do what I need to do. I'll probably notch this just a little bit so that you can put a belt on and off of there and make that where I can remove that balancer so that, you, that uh, if you ever do need to work on something in there, you get that balancer off, get that cover off. You always kind of have to plan ahead on uh, service and maintenance. Uh, with their mount kit, uh, they tells you where that goes, locates you where this mount goes. And then back here, it's a little gray area because we are using the Allison 1000 transmission. Uh, some people's using the 5R110. It just depends on what you want. But if you put this Allison in, uh, you're good for up to 1,000 horsepower and you're done. So you might as well go ahead and put this one in because that motor as uh, every trick in the book to make a huge amount of torque so we already have to be set up for that now in the back here where my eye beams are i've just uh, unbolted this cross member and moved it back and relocated it and uh, that's going to work out really really nice and i want to get it uh back away from the pan so you can service the pan but i'm going to have to go back in here i want to put some supports back in these lower i-beam arms so i'm going to make a removable 
cross member that will go under that pan so that Nathaniel can uh, remove that pan and service it later if you ever need to. But it should be a long time before you need to because these transmissions last a long time and they come with a changeable oil filter. So uh, that Allison transmission is really, really a good one. And then we'll mount our transfer case on here. Get all this mocked up just like I want it and looking pretty. And uh, probably even do a little bit of prep work on it. And then I'll go in there and install this in place. Now what I was talking about on these frame rails is right here is where the frame turns on this one and the same on the other one so I'll come in here and cut this and I'll come back with a cut like this like that I'll do the same on the other one the other one will overlay behind this one and this one will be on the front of this one uh, or vice versa and then we'll weld that back in probably do a little overlay on top then I'll box it in a little bit on the inside uh, my boxing will uh, will probably come back with a curve in the box itself to let this frame twist. You, you need this frame to be able to twist and move or wherever you welded it at, if it's straight through, it'll crack right there because your weld's gonna be harder than your frame and uh, that's where it'll crack. So I'm gonna move that load out by welding and installing it like this, doing an overlay and then doing a, a really nice gusset uh, boxing in there. So you'll see that as time goes on. But uh, do it this way, all my I-beams will be factory so you can get any of those parts aftermarket all the springs, all the front end, everything will be the F-150. So uh, any part you can get at O'Reilly's or anywhere, make it very, very serviceable. Now, before I take all this apart, I'm going to take some, uh, shoot some straight lines with some straight edges and get me some exact numbers of where this is and uh, several different pinpoints on it. I'll come back over here, measure the, this one with some straight edges and get some exact pinpoints on here then the two numbers should be the same. When I get the numbers exactly the same and some good corresponding numbers, that's when I'll cut this one off, cut this one off, and then I'll start putting them in place and, uh, and uh, welding it all back together. And, uh, and hopefully we'll get this baby in here and then working good. So I wanna take a minute, Nathaniel, to show you uh, how well this is working out mocking this up. Cause I can set this engine down where it needs to be and whittle out just what I need and then just raise it all right back up where if it was over in this truck i couldn't do that as easily so now i've got this cut out uh, with the plasma cutter now and i cut a groove out in the bottom of it to where uh, you'll be able to get that pulley on and off once it's in the in the truck and get the belt on it and then the the stuff that i took off the piece i cut out of here i'm going to go back inside here and uh, put you a gusset right up inside here box it in then I'm going to uh, fabricate a piece to put around this place here, a little lip, so it'll have about a one inch lip that'll be tied into the other piece. And then the piece that I cut out, which is, uh, this is the piece I cut out. I'm going to mount it down in there and then uh, mold all that back together and it'll have a factory look and be functional and uh, be extremely strong. Now, once I get that in place, that gets my mounts in place. And then back here in the back, I will start uh, setting up the rear of the transmission. But I have to level the frame to get my three to five degrees of break in it. So uh, that'll take me a little bit and get all that straight. And then, uh, and then we'll start fabricating the rear cross member. All right, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this bolster right quick. I'm going to take, uh, this is the bolster that I'm going to fabricate and put inside there and box in to reinforce this. So the first thing I'm going to do is shear me a piece that matches it exactly. I mean, that's the exact outline of what I'm going to use. Now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to, since it's cardboard, I'm going to put it in there and cut it exactly what I need. Then I'll take this back off and uh, cut my uh, angle here exactly what I need. And then I'm going to put this angle inside here to uh, box this in. So. All right, well that took just one minute to cut. I took my piece of made, I put it up front, drew it out, cut it, cut it, set it in there where it fits very nicely. Now, all I gotta do is take this piece, put it on there, I'll take my plasma cutter, zip, 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 and then this will fit in there just beautifully, and then I'll weld this inside that structure. And then I'm gonna tie this piece to this piece with the uh, curved piece in here, and then overlay it with the other piece. It'll be extremely strong. Now, from this, and a quick little plasma cutting, I have this, my little bolster. I'm going to put that right inside there and stitch weld that inside here. So I'm just going to do that little technique with the cardboard. Look, one time it's in there. Just no time at all. 
Well, now that I got this cleaned out and I went ahead and pickled inside that frame, that's gonna help me weld and neutralize any rust or oxidation in there. I am going to uh, insert this back in here and uh, tack weld this in place. And then once it's all boxed in, then we can uh, undercoat that and that pickling will uh, help that undercoat adhere to that metal inside this, uh, inside this frame rail. All right, now I got that piece tack weld in place and I just, uh, did one inch welds about every inch apart and that'll make that a lot stronger. If you weld that solid all the way around, it makes it too hard and too much heat. So that'll flex just a little bit enough to stay in there a long time and pretty healthy thick piece I'm gonna do right here. And I'm gonna roll this right into this piece and uh, tie it into that piece. Now just take, put a little roll in it. I'll put it right in there, tack weld on this end and then just hammer it down and tack weld it right in there. And uh, finish it up there and that'll be nice, smooth, and look molded when I get done with it. Now the piece I cut out of here, I've whittled down and I'm gonna stitch it in and tack it into this piece, the bolster I put inside there, and then weld it in place. And then I'll just come back here with some flat stock and fill this in, a pretty healthy flat stock, and then that's gonna be a pretty nice, solid repair right there. So, I'll get this piece in place. All right, now that I got this welded in place, this first piece in here, I'm gonna take my hammer and I'm gonna ping this uh, weld back. Everywhere I've welded, it's tightened up. So if I've taken hammer that right on that weld all the way around, it's gonna smash it down a little bit and loosen that weld up and it'll make this a lot stronger so it ain't under all that tension. So uh, let me get this pinged and I'll make the two side pieces. All right, now you can see the finished product. It's all, it's got a bolster inside here that's welded in and tack, uh, welded to this piece and then that piece is overlaid and welded to it. And uh, back's all welded in solid. So that is extremely, extremely strong. Gives us enough room for oil pan clearance and the balancer. So let me set the motor and I'll show you how that's gonna look. All right, and then now you can see my clearance. I've got enough room to get the balancer on and off. I've got enough room to get my pan on and off and uh, put quite a bit of strength back in it. So now it's time to go uh, figure out the back cross member. <laughs> 